What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and in front of me I have NZXT Starter PC from their pre-built program, NZXT Build. So what we're going to be doing in this video is going through and comparing the prices of the hardware in this PC uh, to the prices new. So if you were to build it yourself versus the overall uh, total cost of buying it pre-built. We're going to be doing benchmarks to see how this performs overall and then deciding who this is for and if you should go with a pre-built versus buying new and building it yourself. This video is sponsored by Elgato in the Stream Deck XL. With 32 individual backlit LCD screens, this gives you unlimited amounts of functions, macros, control of pretty much anything you want. For gamers, streamers, photo editing, video editing, music production, the list goes on and on. The Stream Deck XL gives you unlimited control right at your fingertips. If you want to get your hands on it and take your content to the next level, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. getting it all set up and unboxed was as smooth as you'd expect. Uh, there was enough, you know, styrofoam and just foam itself inside the box so it doesn't get damaged during transit. But then also inside the case, they use this expanding sort of insulating uh, styrofoam as well so that the hardware doesn't come undone on the inside and it protects like the GPU and stuff. So again, it doesn't come undone during transit or it just doesn't get damaged. So that's always good to see. Oh yeah. And also inside the box, they include all the manuals to all your components and hardware, as well as any accessories that might have come with it, including things like those badges and stickers and stuff. So you're not missing out on everything. Everything that would come with the boxes originally is still included for you. Now, since here we have their new NZXT H510 case, it does visually look very similar to my H500i. Uh, there are slight improvements though, so it's nice to see that we, uh, with the starter PC, we have this upgraded case. So right as I plugged it in and booted it on, there were no issues whatsoever. It loaded right to the setup screen for Windows 10 Home, which is automatically um, installed on these PCs. So once that was all set up and customized, all I had to do was go in and really just update the NVIDIA drivers for the graphics card, and we were set. So as you can see, I have it set up here behind me on the desktop, some RGB going on inside with the RAM. What we're gonna do now is run through the specs of the starter PC that I have, and then compare all of those components um, and all their prices individually, if you were to just buy all the components yourself, versus the overall cost of the starter PC, which is $899. This is where the review and breakdown starts to get pretty interesting. So inside our NZXT H510 case, we have an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 CPU with the stock cooler, which is the AMD Wraith Stealth. We have 16 gigs of Team T-Force Delta RGB RAM. These are two 8 gig sticks. Our motherboard is the MSI B450 Tomahawk with an MSI GTX 1660 Gaming X graphics card. We also have a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue N.2 SSD an MSI Wi-Fi adapter plugged into the PCIe slot, and the EVGA 500 watt bronze power supply. And like I said before, we also have Windows 10 Home installed. And breaking the prices down individually, the case itself is $80. Our Ryzen 5 2600 is 120. RAM is 76.99. The MSI B450 Tomahawk is 146.92. MSI GTX 1660 Gaming X is 249.99. Our SSD is 149. The power supply is $80.49, with the MSI B905C dual Wi-Fi adapter being 29.99. You add all that up and that is $934.35 versus the $899 you would spend for the starter PC from NZXT. And these are all current prices as of literally the day I'm filming this. And I got all these prices from either the company's website or one of their distributors. So like for example, Newegg. So either use one of those two comparing again, current prices as of today. And these weren't, you know, like aftermarket prices from third party sellers. These were new from the company or Newegg. So you're saving $35 buying the build starter PC versus if you were buying all the components new. Now that also does not include the price of Windows 10 Home, which is included inside the PC. And some other things to bring up is shipping. NZXT charges $50, or if you want it, you know, quicker, you can choose um, different shipping speeds and prices. And all the list of components that I showed with the prices also did not include shipping. So odds are if you're buying all those components and stuff, you'd have to spend shipping on top of that. So $8.99 plus a, you know, flat rate $50 fee for shipping if you wanted to you just have their normal shipping process. 
I still think when comparing it to the 935, not including shipping for all the hardware, buying it yourself is extremely fair. And you don't have to, you know, worry about uh, building it yourself if you are, you know, intimidated by that or you don't know how to. It also includes their two year warranty on the PC and the hardware components itself. So this was kind of eye opening to me that how affordable and fair the prices were for a pre built, which always in the past was kind of like, you know, why they were looked down upon is because they were always charging a lot more than if you would just buy the hardware prices yourself. But in here, it's the complete opposite story. Now getting into performance for the benchmarks, I'll have the graphics up here so you guys can see. These tests were all done at the highest graphical setting at 1920 by 1080p. And you can see all these games here, you know, popular battle royale titles and some things like Battlefield, and even doing a 3D time spy test, everything is hitting above 60 frames per second. Now keep in mind this graphic I'm showing you just starts at 70 FPS, so it may look like some other games aren't performing as well, but keep that in mind, it starts at 70, so everything here is at least above 70 FPS. Now doing those same benchmarks again, but this time at 2560 by 1440, everything's still at the highest graphical settings, it's gonna take a bit of a hit, but as you can see, everything is still performing very well. Battlefield and Overwatch do take a hit at coming in under 60 FPS, but Battlefield, again, is very graphically intensive at that resolution bump, and Overwatch can be very fast paced and stuff, but still performing very well at a higher resolution. So you're getting extremely fair pricing and good performance in your games. Now, granted, I didn't benchmark every single game. I just showed off kind of a wide variety of some of the more popular ones from the more graphically intensive ones to the more fast paced titles. So yeah. Now, who are pre-built PCs for? Because they're not for everybody. And while they do have the starter PC bundle, which is the one that I'm showing off, there are different tiers that you can upgrade to if you want to spend more money, obviously get greater performance as well. But pre-built PCs are obviously for the starter here. Somebody who doesn't know how to build a PC on their own. Granted, it's not that difficult if you watch a few tutorials or you, you know, watch some, some videos online about it, but it can be very intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. Because you also have to worry about hardware compatibility with AMD and Intel and different motherboard compatibility with the Intel or AMD sockets for the CPUs. So it can be intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. Buying the pre-built, you are not having to worry about any of that. It's literally boot and go. It's all set up. You're ready to go for an extremely fair price. And I think in the past, the reason why pre built would get you know, a lot of crap is because that wouldn't be the case. They would charge an insane amount for a pre-built PC where you could build it yourself for hundreds of dollars less. But in here, that is not the case. So I do often get asked about pre-built PCs, which is why I wanted to do this video for you guys today. Because if you're, you know, wanting to get into PC gaming, you don't know how to build a PC yourself, you can check out either the starter PC or upgrade to different tiers and different PCs or customize your very own with NZXT's build program, which in the end, as you saw, I think the main, you know, synopsis of this is extremely fair. So that'll wrap it up for the kind of overview and review of the NZXT Build PC program. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support, and I'll drop a link down below so you can check it out as well as configuring your own PC. How did I lose my train of thought? Anyways, feel free to hit me up and follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.